While the chemists have their periodic table, physicists have the standard particle model that summarizes the fundamental particles in the universe. Here are the six flavors of quarks. These are the bosons, but what I want to focus on in this video is just these right here, the leptons. The electron and the electron neutrino are categorized as first generation leptons. Muon and its neutrino are second generation. Tauon, third. As you move up the generations, they still have similar properties, but their masses increase. Each lepton has its antiparticle. The anti-electron is denoted with the opposite charge, and the anti-electron neutrino has a bar above it. Each lepton is assigned with what's called a lepton number. If a particle is a lepton, then it has a lepton number of plus one. If it's an antiparticle of a lepton, then the lepton number is minus one. This is a key information when it comes to writing equations for nuclear decays or interactions. That's because we have to follow the particle conservation laws. Two of the conservation laws states that charge has to be conserved and lepton numbers must also be conserved. Let's see how we can apply this to beta decay where a neutron changes into a proton and an electron. We'll check if charge is conserved. A neutron is neutral, proton plus one, electron minus one. So the right hand side balances left hand side. This means that charge is conserved. What about the lepton number? Neutrons and protons are not leptons. So their lepton number is zero. Electron has a lepton number of plus one. The two sides will not balance unless we put a minus one on the right hand side. Either the anti-electron or the anti-electron neutrino might work. If I choose the anti-electron, which has a charge of minus one, that will unbalance the charge. So the only option here is the anti-electron neutrino that has no charge, but a lepton number of minus one. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe.